welcome to an Everyday Canines video. In this episode on weave training, we're going to look at troubleshooting the wrong entry. And what I mean by this is when the dog goes in on the wrong side. So a dog should always enter the weaves on its left shoulder. But sometimes what happens is the dog enters on the right shoulder. And that is incorrect. And now the pattern's off. It's not, they're, they're going to get faulted in competition. And if they carried on and they'd done the weaves like that, they'd be eliminated. They always enter, they've always got to enter left side. Doesn't matter where the handler is, the left shoulder has to pass the pole first. So why does this happen? Well, first of all, it can just be a simple case as the dog doesn't understand its job. It doesn't understand that, it understands to weave, but it doesn't understand that they have to always go in on the left hand side. So the dog just goes, well, whatever happens, as long as I weave. Sometimes this can happen because when in the early days of training, we've got excited when the dog has offered us weaves, any sort of weaves, and we've rewarded behavior that wasn't correct. We're like, oh, they weave, they weave. You know, okay, they didn't go in the right side, they weave. And some dogs, well, quite often some dogs, you reward it once, they repeat it. So we have to be very careful when we're rewarding things, what we are actually rewarding. Are we rewarding the correct behavior? Dogs are black and white. They don't get that you're rewarding them for the effort of trying. They go, if I did that and I got reward, that's what I'm meant to do. So when we're doing two by twos, this should help enormously with our entries. But I always find that a dog has a stronger and a weaker side. Most dogs, the left side is their stronger side. Some dogs like Swift, the right side is their stronger side. They like to have that pole to curve round. Because if I'm here, this is a good indicator of the side they've got to go in because of the pole. So how do we work that? Right, first of all, two by twos, yes, yes. But if we're having problems and our dog is having issues on one side over the other, first of all, I want you to ask yourself, is there something you're doing that's causing that? Are you favouring a side? We all do it. How are you doing more sessions on the left and the right side is almost a forgotten thing? Because, you know, that's what we do. We tend to focus on one side and forget we've done that side, the other side. So what it may simply be a case of doing is getting out there and training more on your right side. So, for instance, what we can do and what I did with Magpie, I trained her on a stronger side first, once, left, and then I swapped sides and went to the right. So for Swift, her right side is the stronger. So I'll train her once on the right. Pulse, pulse. Good girl. Then I'll swap sides and train on the left. And I'll do more repetitions on the left than the right. And just like all forms of troubleshooting, we've only got four pulse. We do not need a full set of 12 to achieve this because we're working on the understanding you go in that line. Now, what if you've got a dog? Now, some clubs, they're training, they do fun agility. They don't always appreciate the rules and how things are supposed to be done. And I do know clubs where they just train the dog to go in any side. If your dog is really, really set there, because maybe they've done so many years where they could just pick which side they wanted to do and go in on. So for them, you're having to completely change the behavior and remove that choice. And that can be really confusing for that dog, especially if it's an old dog, it's gotten used to that. It's been rewarded for doing that multiple times. You may have gone back to the two by twos to do that, but they could still be having issues. How can we help the dog? We can start by doing something like blocking. Now we can do this with our body. So for instance, I can be here and I can force my dog, if my dog's here, I can force my dog to take the correct entry while I'm on this side because they can't do anything different. But what happens if I start moving away, they may still pick up the wrong entry. So what we can do is we can create a barrier. Take a jump wing and we just create this barrier. We can use a cone as well. So now I've blocked off that choice. And if I'm further away, so I can't be the force that's blocking that choice, that is now doing the job for me. So I can come back and I can send my dog, pulse, pulse. Send her through, that wing is preventing them from taking the wrong entry. And this could be something if your dog has 
picked up the habit of the wrong entry, this could be something they need to do on multiple sessions just to help them especially when you're at a distance because often what happens is we can correct the behavior when we're there because we're using our body when we take ourselves out of the picture that can be when things go wrong and people say well they know not to do that but yes they know when you're, you're there if i'm stood here and i'm like this this is obvious what happens if i'm over here i'm over there so now we're offering another way of helping them now once they figured out that they're doing this with this here, we start to give them an option. We open it up a little bit. Now, this is a very shallow gap. Swift could get through it. I suspect that some smaller collies could get through it. So you might not do it that much, but you're opening up a slight gap. So you give them a choice. Send them through. If they do that, okay, give them more choice. You see where we're going with this? More choice, more choice. Now, you're gonna do this over a few sessions because even with four, it's a lot of strain on the body. And when you're re retraining a behavior, it's a lot of mental energy. And what we don't want is our dog getting tired mentally um, and then they start making mistakes. So mistakes and injuries are more likely to occur when our dogs get tired, physically and mentally. Same with us. So what we want to do is we want to end a session sooner than we may think because we leave the dog wanting more and we leave them to the point where they're not that tired if you work until your dog is shattered they're going to take longer to recover mentally and physically for the next session and also they're going to finish on that oh, i was exhausted i was so glad that session fin finished whereas if they finished when oh they finished so well i want more i want more they're eager for the next session same with people okay so we keep moving this we keep moving this we're moving this now i can open it up to a point where there's a really obvious they could choose that if they wanted to and in essence in a way it's almost funneling them in so let's see what swift does she's never seen this setup so what does swift do okay ready ready pulse pulse good girl now we keep moving it we keep moving it once we get to here it's pretty much redundant so that's how we're going to work that if we need to. As I say, with a young dog that's just learning, you should be able to correct this with your two by twos and not need to do that. But if you've got a dog that's really fixed in that habit or you've had some training that's allowed them to learn that behavior previously, then you may have to just help them with a prop and, um, and then and just go from there. And hopefully, good girl once you've done that you'll assist them and i use my wings and cones quite often when i'm trying to shape entries into weave poles when i'm at a distance so it's certainly something i find quite viable if i'm just trying to help that dog understand just gives them that extra support i hope you've enjoyed this everyday canines video and if you have you might like to subscribe to the youtube channel you can also check us out on facebook instagram and now tiktok and i hope to see you all again very very soon